May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, God our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The whole earth had one language, one culture, and all people lived in one place, so the story goes. And in their unity, the people said, come, let us build a tower a visible sign of our great name, our oneness and strength like God. Otherwise, we'll be scattered about all over the earth. They're frightened, these people. They have this sense of strength in unity, but they're afraid they're going to lose it. So they construct a monolithic tower to guard against scattering, against being dispersed, and disunited. And that's a real fear, isn't it? That's a real fear. It's the fear of instability, insecurity, and change. The fear of the breakup of those things that hold us together. The breakup of social cohesion, family, work structures, and employment expectations. The breakup of culture and language and religion. That's scary stuff. And it's happening, isn't it? Yes, those fears are real. And so are the towers. Monolithic, monocultural towers founded on platforms of fear, built with bricks of nationalism and cultural imperialism, held together with the cement of intolerance. Those towers are real. Remember, we still have a political party in this country called One Nation, just. They still exist. I looked them up on its website. The current leader of One Nation, Jim Savage, says, We cannot continue to be a community of innocent bystanders. We are all guilty if we do nothing. Someone has to start turning things around. Okay, Jim. In what direction? Would you like us to turn things around? He says, we need a passion for goodness in politics, not expediency and power plays. Well, yes, I'm with you there, Jim. It's not about dollars and cents and politics and power and repaying favours. Yes. It's about Australia and her people. Yes. Go on. We must be one people in one united Christian nation. Oh, and now you've lost me, Jim, I'm sorry. (laughs) One united Christian nation, as if Christianity were one united thing, as if religion was something that united us. Of course, one nation hardly registers a blip on the political radar these days. They're pretty much irrelevant. But only because the fearful tower building they represent has been taken up by the major parties. From what I hear in the current political discourse, it doesn't sound like there's many votes left in multiculturalism. I hope I'm wrong, but it doesn't get much of a run these days. Except from God. God comes to see the towers we build and bang. Suddenly, things aren't quite as stable as we'd hoped they'd be. While the united people say, come, let us build, God says, come, let us scatter. Their one language becomes confused by diversity, as God scatters them over all the earth. See, this is the most 
perfectly symmetrical story. The story itself is like a beautifully crafted tower. It leads us up and it brings us down again. For God says no to this tower building. No to your grasping after unity in uniformity. It is not strong, it is not heavenly, and it is not part of my will in creation, says our God. Look at the earth I have made. Look at the landscapes of variety, the rainforests, the bushland, the mountains, the grasslands and plains. Look at the ocean and see the extravagant diversity of life that patterns the earth. This is my creation, says God. Do you see here the work of a God who desires uniformity, homogeneity, sameness? Is this the work of a creator who wants simple conformity among creatures? No, says our God. And so... God does the very thing the people fear the most. God scatters them. Look at this picture of Australia. Each colour, each block of colour on this map represents a different language. In 1788, there were about 250 distinct Aboriginal languages and 600 dialects spoken in Australia. And a word for suicide didn't occur in any of them. I find this an extraordinary and beautiful picture. Like rainforest and reef, here is the natural diversity of God's creation reflected in humanity. And if humanity is indeed the image of God in creation, what does this picture tell us about God's own nature? Is God a monolithic lump of divinity, a tower of theological sameness? Or is God a community of diversity whose unity is the spirit of love? Of course, this remarkable picture masks a tragedy. Today, Fewer than 150 of these languages remain in daily use. That's still an astonishing number, but all except roughly 20 of them are critically endangered, spoken only by a handful of people each. Of those 20 strong languages, only a few are being learned by children, and they have all had to find a way of talking about suicide. What is lost when a language dies? Professor Gilad Zuckerman, a linguist from Adelaide University, says, without a language, you do not have cultural autonomy. You do not have intellectual sovereignty. You do not have culture. You do not have heritage. I take heart from Vincentia High School in New South Wales. Students there are taught Durga, the language of the Yuan nation. Classes are compulsory for every student in year eight, indigenous or non-indigenous. Through their Durga instruction, the school hopes students will be given a different perspective on our land, a different lens through which to view Australia. Durga teacher Jonathan Hill reckons that this type of education is an antidote to the tide of intolerance that infects the modern mind. 
I have to say that this subject brings out a sense of insecurity and inadequacy in me because I can only speak one language. You know, all that barrage of welcome and hellos before, I can only say g'day. I know a man who was born to Chinese parents in Java. He's fluent in Chinese, Javanese, Indonesian and English and he writes poetry in all four of those languages. But he's not a professor of linguistics. Those are just the languages he needs to function in life. Everyone in Indonesia speaks at least two languages. The other day I saw a bumper sticker that said, this is Australia. We eat meat, we drink beer, and we speak effing English. Seen that? That's, that's clever, isn't it? Reading that did nothing to improve my sense of linguistic inadequacy, I have to say. God wills diversity of language and culture. The tower builders say, we will not give in to diversity. We will not submit to the variety and richness which is God's will for creation. We will be one, speaking, thinking, dressing, acting the same. And God scatters them with creative love like seeds. Seeds that will grow up with different languages, cultures and ways of knowing to add still more wonder and diversity to the garden of creation. Okay, God, we get the idea. No more towers. We're meant to be different. But you know, oh God, this diversity thing is all very well. It makes for beautiful rainforests and reefs, but we still have to live together. You scattered us very creatively over all the earth, but now things are getting a bit muddled. We find we end up living next door to people who are different to us. We don't speak their language, we don't understand their culture, and it's not comfortable and it's not easy. And we haven't managed particularly well at it over the past couple of hundred years and we're still struggling with it now. Okay, we're meant to be different. But how do we live together without resorting to tower building? You've scattered us. Now how about a bit of guidance on the unity question? Scattering God. Are you not also the gathering God? Suddenly, there came a sound like the rush of a great wind blowing. It is the wind that blew over the waters of chaos at the beginning of creation. The wind that scattered the people like seeds at Babel. Hear that sound. And know that God, the creator, is at work here. And now, see fire. Tongues of flame flickering and dancing in the wind. So, the Holy Spirit comes. And here we are, scattered seeds touched by regenerative fire, the fire of germination, the fire of recreation. What is the miracle of Pentecost? It's the reverse of Babel. Suddenly at Pentecost, the disciples of Christ are able to speak the good news of his new life across the barrier of culture, race and language and be heard. 
at Babel. We learn about God's will for diversity and at Pentecost we discover the source of our unity. The scattering God is the gathering God. For we are united by the spirit of love in Christ who prays, Abba, Father, may they be one as we are one. As we are one, neither confused nor divided. I'd like to finish with a story about a bird. Scripture pictures God's spirit as wind, fire and a bird. What you're hearing now is the voice of the lyre bird mimicking the calls of other birds. This story is called Why Bullen Bullen the Lyrebird Speaks Many Languages. In the dream time, all animals spoke the same language. They all lived happily with one another and often gathered together to enjoy corroborees. One day, the mischievous crow started imitating all the other animals, saying rude things about them. Soon, the platypus, koala, eagle, wombat and frog were all arguing with one another. Only the lyrebird didn't join in. Instead, the lyrebird tried to stop the other animals from shouting at each other. The spirits were angry about the arguments and decided to punish the animals They took away the language spoken by all the animals and gave each animal a language of its own. But the lyrebird, the peacemaker, the reconciler, who had tried to stop the fight, was given the power to speak to them all.